uh, we're going to do it the same way we did last time in that uh, Victoria and Randy and I are each going to do about 10 minutes or so on, on a topic. Uh, Dr. Fries is going to start and he's going to talk about COVID-19 and, uh, you know, life at the hospital these days and, and maybe about the masking up and Doug Ducey and all that. And then Victoria is going to talk about um, the, um, the um, uh, police reforms and about the housing challenges. And then I'm going to end up uh, talking about education and uh, Kathy Huffman's plans for, to open up the K through 12 schools. And so first up is Dr. Fries. Thank you, Pam. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in and um, certainly enjoy sharing information and love your feedback and participation. So uh, Pam wanted me to focus on COVID in Arizona and the different view, uh, viewpoints I have. We'll first start with the information, right? Everybody's aware of the major- Whatever, if you wanna come, you can. Okay, almost done. Okay. Everybody can kind of mute there uh, if you're not speaking. Um, so, uh, Everybody knows that Arizona is having, a, a, of course, a major spike, right? The um, stay-at-home order expired, what, just over a month ago, and we all know that the um, incubation period is anywhere uh, as long as two weeks, so I think per capita, Arizona is now one of the highest uh, number of COVID um, infections in um, not only the country, I think across the, the globe. So um, the hospital, this is what we, we all were trying to avoid is uh, um, the surge in, in, in hospital needs and, 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 and accessing healthcare needs. Um, clearly, you know, we're, we're getting stressed. Uh, the hospitals are getting stressed. The uh, DHS does continue to collect data on hospital beds, emergency room visits, um, ICU beds, and of course, ventilators that are available. We, uh, you know, we are not currently at capacity. Can you run upstairs by my computer up by the kitchen table and grab some hit earbuds? There we go. Pam, you, mute, you, you muted me, sorry. <laughs> okay, thanks for catching on everybody else. So anyway, um, the DHS is keeping track. We, we, we aren't capacity, we aren't at capacity, but you know, we're, we're getting close. The, the concern is, you know, I hear people telling me, oh, well, everybody just needs to get it. Well, that's not a good response because it can be very uh, hard on certain people. Um, you know, we all know that uh, those over 65 have a harder time. Immunocompromised people have a harder time. Diabetics, 12 times more likely to die from COVID than, than uh, other patients. So it's not a matter of, oh, we just need to reach herd immunity. Uh, we, it's a matter of getting a vaccine and making sure we develop good treatments for people that are getting ill. And we want to avoid a surge where, that's what flatten the curve meant, right? Over time, the same number of people will have the disease, but they will have it spread out. And our hospital healthcare system won't be stressed and people can access the healthcare they need. And for, don't forget, People come to the hospital for other reasons. So if we have an ICU full of, and, and when you have a COVID ICU, you don't go to the COVID ICU if you have another ICU need, right? The COVID ICU is for the COVID patients. And if there's an empty bed in the COVID ICU and you're having a heart attack, well, you can't go into that bed. You have to go to, into a, a, an ICU that doesn't, ha doesn't put you at risk for, for getting infected. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of layers of things that, are, that should be thought of. And I, I think that right now, um, we're not taking the precautions that we need. So speaking of precautions, um, <clears throat> what can you do to fight a virus? Well, frequently for, for virus, we just have blunt tools. We really don't, outside of a therapy that blocks the virus you know, um, after infection or, or, or improves outcome after infection, we just have blunt tools. And those blunt tools are staying at home if you can, right? Only go out and go where you need to when it's essential. Um, that is no longer mandatory, but I think that people should be considering that uh, to, to be safe. Look, I'm not going to go out unless I have to go to the store. And if you're lucky enough not to have to go to work every day, you can arrange staying home and working from home as much as possible. Um, it's also, um, you know, social distancing. You know, when you do go out, try to keep yourself distant from others. Don't get into crowds. Uh, if you lived in Oklahoma, I would recommend staying home this weekend. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, and also 
mask wearing. That's a really big issue that's that. come up. Uh, masks do slow the spread of the virus, particularly if both people that are in close proximity are wearing a mask. If I, I, I'm wearing a mask to protect you, you're wearing a mask to protect me. If we're both wearing a mask, the more people that are wearing a mask, the more protection there is from the spread of the virus, the more, um, um, uh, the, the less likely an infected person will infect that person and I infect someone else. And I see people say silly things like, oh, well, here's a fence. I'm gonna sell this fence to you as a mosquito net. These people don't understand that it's not the virus where the mask is stopping, it's the droplets of, of, of the respiratory droplets that are in our exhalation, that, we, that are part, as we talk, that, is, that are stopped by the mask. And the more tightly woven the mask, the more layers to the mask, the more the mask is stopping those droplets, right? Just a normal person talking is going to, there's gonna be respiratory droplets they, that are in the air, and they, they usually don't make it beyond six feet before they hit the ground, right? Gravity affects the droplets like it does everything else. Aerosolized droplets are a little bit harder. Aerosolized droplets can stay in the air longer um, without gravity, because they're much smaller. Aerosolized droplets require a little bit different mass. That's where the respirators or the N95s help. So doctors and nurses that are caring for COVID patients that may aerosolize some, some of their uh, respiratory droplets, meaning they're fine and they can stay in the air longer, that's when the air N95 is needed. But just a regular surgical mask, tightly woven cloth, cloth mask or fiber mask will help to stop the droplets from traveling so far before they hit the ground. So yes, masks help. They help to slow the spread. Uh, and that way we won't have a surge. And that way we won't have healthcare uh, facilities stressed. So, I, uh, so um, we have spoken frequently as a caucus to DHS urging uh, Dr. Chris and Governor Ducey to mandate mask wearing. He has chosen not to. Uh, as you saw, things escalate in the past couple of days. Was it yesterday or the day before? That there were several hundred physicians across the state who, who started a letter to the governor. Um, I didn't sign it initially, but I actually found it later and I've signed it. And, and I absolutely support that masks should be mandatory. I wish I said to several news outlets that the governor needs to do something proactive and stop just making recommendations and start making um, you know, um, decisions about how to slow this virus down. And wearing a mask whenever you're out in public is important. Now, somebody else said, well, it doesn't matter if you're outside. That's a very good point. If you're outside, you're less likely to be able to effectively spread the virus, unless you're very close to someone. Of course, if you're very close, then a mask is important. But I would still mandate wearing a mask outside, um, you know, and, and, and just, just to be consistent and get, people need to understand you, you know, if, if, if the leadership is unclear on whether a mask is helpful or, or, or don't, don't, doesn't wear a mask themselves or doesn't develop a policy that enforces how important mask wearing is, then pe people aren't going to feel like it makes a difference. It's very important for our leaders to model proper behavior and wearing a mask is very important. Um, uh, I was encouraged when Mayor uh, uh, Romero and I think the mayor of Nogales said that they wanted to make their own executive orders that masks would be required in their cities, but initially they weren't allowed to because of that very, very initial um, executive order from Governor Ducey said, you know, you can't do more than I'm saying you can do. Uh, he then gave his permission, or I don't know what the right word is, for the, for the cities, the mayors to do to make their own executive orders. That's encouraging. But what we really need is consistency across the state and a mandate from the state saying that masks are required because they will slow the virus spread and therefore slow the surge uh, of people needing health care and therefore make everyone safe and, and have the health care they need when they need to access it. I'll stop there. <laughs>